Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to another show of the Millionaire Network Marketer. Today I'm excited because we have Tony Lucero with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's good to be here. Thank you, Lisa, for having me on. I'm excited, man. This is good. I know. I'm so excited too because you teach so much on the inner game of things and that's a lot of times where people get stuck is in self-belief of I can do this or not. So I'm really excited to go over that with you today. Um, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, I would love to. So I've been a, um, a serial entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. When I was 17 years old, I made the decision to go into the Air Force. And the second I signed on the piece of paper, I realized it was probably a really bad decision because I'm not, I'm not a good follower. I don't like to be told what to do. So, um, but I did it for five and a half years, got a great uh, background in responsibility and discipline and being focused and attention to detail, which I absolutely love that the Air Force was able to do that for me. But then when I got out, I, I kind of just, um, about three years into the Air Force, I was 21, I got involved in my first company in the, the direct sales space. Um, old, old company, they're still around and discovered this thing called residual in income and said, hey, this is pretty cool. I made $63 extra this month, you know, and, and it came in the next month and it came in the next month. And so I got excited about that, but more so, um, you gosh, looking back, it's been 35 years now I've been in direct sales and uh, MLM and loved every minute of it. Um, but I, I love the, the personal growth of it. And I was the type of guy that was always sitting in the front row. I was always the guy that they said, hey, can somebody give a testimonial? I'd raise my hand because I was told by one of my mentors that in order to succeed in this industry is you have to sit at the front and you've got to um, be the one on stage, right? So I did whatever I could to do that and I realized that at a very young age that um, I had the ability to connect with people and communicate and had lots of energy and you know, it just was a perfect, I was a perfect fit for that, for that industry. So failed miserably in about, oh, I don't know, People go, oh my gosh, my company I failed at, I was terrible at. Well, I felt, I think, 11 companies I was involved with over my 35 years. Um, I was part of, and then they closed business, they, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and I never quit on a company, but the company quit on me, uh, which is something we'll probably talk about in a little bit. And, and then recently, in the last 12 years, got involved with a company that uh, was a health and wellness company. They were doing about, oh, five million a year, something like that, and a group of us got together, got behind a cause and a crusade and a mission and a vision, and literally in 12 years became one of the fastest growing companies in that space, and that company now um, is doing about two billion, well, it's done about two billion in sales in 15 countries, and I was part of every part of um, that growth. So I've seen the good, I've seen the uncomfortable, I've seen the beautifulness, and um, so I'm coming from a place of really a, a lot of experience when I, when I communicate with people, especially people that are new to this space, um, I, I know pretty much everything that's going to happen along the way. So it's been, it's been a, quite a journey. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And I don't want to celebrate in the fact that, you know, you had 11 failures before you got to your epic company, but... I kind of want to celebrate that because we have some people on the line today that maybe have been in a couple companies like me prior to the one that I'm in now and didn't have success. And they could be like, well, it's just me. I'm just not cut out for this. And they actually are, you know, it's just that they haven't either, um, you know, gotten that momentum yet or the mentorship or that team effort of, of making such an impact like you guys were able to do in, in your early years of your now company. So can you kind of start there and, you know, what it takes to make a movement that you have in this company, what does it take to like lock arms with a bunch of people and what does that look like on the daily efforts to attract those type of people to you and then getting on board with you to do something like that? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I figured out that, um, you know, this, you guys, this business, a lot of people get involved in a, a home business and they get involved in this industry because, you know, obviously they see the lifestyle. They see what's possible. You know, they hear about people having this thing called freedom and, you know, being their own boss, which, which will happen. 
Um, but you have to put yourself on a three to five year plan. I, I'm just going to be really real. A lot of people go, well, it didn't happen for me this month, so therefore it doesn't work. Or I made 17 phone calls and no one's interested, so therefore it doesn't work. And so, you know, a lot of people don't like that, that thing called rejection. Um, I just figured out at a very young age, I grew up in, a, in an environment, I had a stepfather that told me every day how miserable I was as a human being and how I'd never amount to anything and how crazy I was and how stupid I was. Don't even try, you're going to fail. So I came from an environment that I already heard all that. Like I've already heard, you know, all the negativity um, in, in my home. And so I made a decision when I was 11 years old that I was going to choose a path that I was going to uh, be, be, be a positive, be the opposite of what I was told. And so I realized that I would have to uh, endure some bumps. I would have to endure some no's. I would have to endure failing, um, which I absolutely love to fail. If I'm not failing, I'm not, I'm not succeeding. That's the way I look at it. So at a very young age, I embraced the fact that I didn't know what I didn't know. I was just going to suit up and show up. I was going to be dumb enough to listen and smart enough to follow through. And I would listen to my mentors. Right? I would listen to the people that I trusted. If they said, Tony, do this, I would do that. Um, and many times they would say, when you do this, though, this potentially can happen. You might get a no. You might get your best friend who you grew up with who's going to tell you, you're crazy. What are you doing? Those things don't work. And I, had, and I was prepared ahead of time knowing that my best friends would probably tell me that I was crazy. So I came from a place where um, I knew that I was going to have to become bulletproof in a sense. I knew that I was going to have to. It wasn't going to be very, very easy. Business is not easy. Not just this business, but business in general is not easy. Raising a family is not easy. You know, planning a vacation is not easy. There's a lot of things that aren't easy, so why should this be any different? So I realized I was going to make mistakes, but I also want to make sure that I surrounded myself with people that were successful, that did have a degree of, you know, the, the attitude I wanted to be around, the positivity I wanted to be around, the culture I wanted to be around, um, the, the learning environment that I wanted to re be around. And when I was around those people, I was like a sponge. Like I would have my journal out or I would ask questions. People got, oh my gosh, here comes Tony. He's going to ask another question. I was always asking questions about this and that. Not the, um, you know, that, not the typical questions about like the comp plan and all that stuff, you guys. That drives me nuts. But questions about, how do I become better as a person so that I can attract people to my business? That I can become a better speaker, a better a, a teacher, a better leader. And I grew into that by reading books, by being around the right people, and asking tons and tons of questions uh, with, of that of my mentors. Because if you're in a company right now, everybody has the same products, everybody has the same comp plan, everybody sometimes dresses the same, <laughs> every, but every, everything's the same. So why is it somebody goes crazy and somebody doesn't? Why does somebody has mediocre, mediocre success and somebody has stellar success? And, and all that has to do with, um, you know, your habits, your action, and has to do with your belief in yourself. And for me, I've always had belief in myself, even though as a boy growing up, I was kind of in a path where, I shouldn't really have belief in myself because I was told every day that I would never amount to anything. But something inside me said, Tony, that's, you're much better than that. I mean, you've got much more to offer. Don't listen to that. That's that person's reality. That's their perception. But that's not who you are. And at 11 years old, I drew a line in the sand on a teeter-totter in Houston, Texas in the dead of summer. It's 105 degrees. I said, I am going to be positive and I'm going to surround myself with positive people. And that's why I believe this industry is the best industry on the planet for personal growth. You're going to make money, but you're only going to, you're going to earn as you learn, but you have to get to a place where that you, you know, you, you, you have the skills and you have the confidence and you have the belief and you have all those things. So it, for me, it was all about my environment. I was always around people that lifted me up, that raised me up. And if they weren't close to me, I would seek them out. Like my upline, I, most of the time I never had upline. So I always would go Find who would work with me, and you'd be surprised, a good teacher, a good leader, a good mentor loves to work with somebody that's hungry. So if you're that person, if your person above you is not helping you, very nicely go around <laughs> and, seek, and seek counsel from somebody that knows what they're doing. I love that. And there's so many things in what you said, and I think I'll start from the place of you know, even from being a kid and the messages that you heard then, mm -hmm. um, similarly, like I, around the age of 11, stood up 
I was, you know, the introvert, the kid that got picked on, ridiculed and stuff like that. And I was tired of not being strong. And I picked up my first set of weights. What, what little girl lifts weights at 11? Um, it was my little inner wonder woman standing up and being like, I'm done, you know? <laughs> um, but we get to decide. We may not have seen, you know, the perfect, um, how our parents interacted or how other kids interacted with us. We may have been like heavily teased and stuff like that, but we don't have to stay in that. And almost in this industry more than any other one, because there is so much self growth to increase your worth enough to make exponentially more than what you have been. Uh, you need that amount of self growth to shed off those things that we experienced early on in life and have that be not true. You know, we get to make our own existence. And for you, it happened at 11 that you were like, okay, I'm, I'm only going to be positive now and decided that that was your line in the sand moment. Um, but I kind of want to get into you became at some point in your uh, career path, you became a hypnotist and, and that's a different level of changing your subconscious patterns. And based on what we initially experienced early in life, we can have subconscious beliefs that are just sitting just underneath the surface. And a lot of our thoughts, actually 95% of them are our subconscious beliefs. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that you learned and even learning how to do hypnosis with people that people that are kind of questioning their own belief, either that they're able to do this or in the industry themselves and that type of thing, um, they're holding themselves back because of a self-belief. What would you say and speak to that as far as like hypnosis and changing the subconscious from a deeper level? Yeah. I mean, the, um, I get, I guess I get a lot of questions with regards to, you know, hypnosis. I did it for 10 years. I was one of those, a comedy stage hypnosis or hypnotist. And, you know, in, in learning what hypnosis is and how the brain acts and reacts and, you know, the two sides of the brain, you have your conscious side, uh, which is the side that's awake. It's, it's the side that knows that you're watching this. It's the side that knows that, you know, you've got something to do right after this. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's the busy side of your brain. And you have the subconscious mind that, Actually, from the time that you're born, so but it's from the time that you're, you know, in, actually inside your mom, um, and you're laying in there and you're, you know, all, the, all that fluid around you and you're just a little, you know, fetus, everything that you're exposed to, everything that you hear is actually part of your subconscious development. So, for example, um, you know, when you, uh, you, you're a hero that you're a baby when they're born, they love the sound of music. Well, maybe the mother when they were, when she was pregnant, was playing classical music, you know, just to calm herself down, and the baby would hear that. Uh, so from the time you're born to about the time you're 11, you have this thing called what they call one mind. And everything that you experience from that time, in that 11-year period, is being absorbed into your, uh, your, your, your mind, and your subconscious mind is being developed in the, during that period. So if you think about the way that you're raised and the belief system that you had and the way your family raised you and what the kids said to you at school and all these many cases belittling things that um, were happening around you, um, then when your subconscious mind is developed after 11 years old and you move through the rest of your life, things start to come up. Doubt starts coming up when you get going down a path. Like for me, I would get going down a path feeling really good like, oh my gosh, I'm going to join this company, I'm going to do this. And all of a sudden I would hear a voice or I'd hear, a, I'd hear a feeling would come over, like, which like freeze me for a second. Like, I would hear the voice of my father going, you know, you're crazy, you're stupid, don't try that. And so then I had this battle going on to overcome that, right? So it was a, it was a tape that was being played. It was, a, it was a bad, bad movie that would just show up, you know, just when something was, when I knew I was doing something. So what I can tell people is this. First of all, what happened in your past, it actually already happened. <laughs> Go figure, right? So there's nothing you can do about your stepfather or the girl, the girl that you know said a, a really uh, terrible remark to you, or your aunt that says you know you're this or you guys. That's already passed, right? The, the business that you did two years ago, it's already done. The, what I'm hoping is is that you learned something from that experience, right? You learned and you came stronger because of that experience. And so when that experience or that feeling comes again, 
you're able to do what I call a pattern interrupt and flip a switch and go a different direction. So the second something happens to me that feels like, oh gosh, I literally can flip a switch and find something that brings me pleasure, find something that will distract me from that feeling. And I do that so often and I've been doing it so often that now when something comes up, it's like if it's negative, I don't even feel it. Like I don't even, I don't even recognize because I'm so, I've been using and practicing so much, you know, and working on my beliefs so much and being, being aware of my environment so much and being around people that empower me so much and, and, um, you know, all that stuff that that's all I know now. Like I don't know in a dispowering beliefs. I don't know what it feels like to be in a negative space for some people. You know, it's a week long or two weeks long or a month long. God, this month was terrible. You're like, I don't even know what that feels like because I have a moment that might feel bad, but then I can switch it because of practice and knowing what I believe in myself and knowing what I'm capable of that none of that really matters. If something happens, my best guidance would be is if something happens, something feels uncomfortable is to stop, freeze, take a moment out and go, okay, why is this happening? Analyze it for a second. Don't respond. Don't react yet. And go, okay, what do I need to learn from this? What do I need to experience? And then from there, once you've taken a little time out, then you move on. That's how you grow. And that's how you get rid of belief systems from your past is by going, okay, I had a person tell me this my whole life. I get it. What, did I, what do I need to learn from that? Do I want to learn to stay in that space? Or do I want to learn how to overcome that? Great. How do I overcome that? Hmm, let me ask my mentor. Mentor, how do I overcome that? Great question. Read this book. Great question. Get to this event. Great question. Let's go have lunch. It, it, and you do that, and all of a sudden you start to get your what I call your power back, and you start to feel good. You feel, you know, you know, knowledge is power, as they say, and then you know, away you go. So the subconscious, the the brain will play tricks on you. Your subconscious mind believes whatever you tell it is the truth. And so every day you could probably hear people do these affirmations like I'm great, I'm energized, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful, I'm sexy, I'm tired, whatever, whatever it is. Whatever you're telling yourself, your subconscious mind believes that is the truth. So you got to be very aware of what you're seeing, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing all around you. And just once you're aware of it, if you don't like it, change it. Yeah, I agree with you because um, the subconscious actually come to a point where you become. Yeah. Yeah. The subconscious mind is so powerful that some of those old messages might replay actually. So even if you are affirming that Mm -hmm. the, the earlier subconscious belief and typically it's shaped from ages zero to five years old. So it's from a time that we don't even remember where we got that thought. So how a lot of people ask, how do I get past that? Step one is creating awareness of those thoughts. So it's more listening, like what's actually being said. So say if you go to make that new sales call and there's this like fear factor of like, I don't want to dial, you know, they're going to tell me no, just kind of like listen to those, just ask yourself, like, is that true? So even if it's something negative about you that's being said, ask, is that true? You know, and then you're going to have your conscious mind can kind of step in and say, well, no, I'm a good person, you know, and, and answer to that. So that was one thing that I've learned about shifting, you know, and actually creating change. So thank you for yeah. touching on that so much on the subconscious and like where that initiates from and just helping people understand that even if it's negative thoughts that you're thinking right now and you're actually attracting negative people onto your team and it's because your subconscious attracts to you what it believes is true, that's kind of like the law of attraction, um, you can shift that. And then once you are shifting your thoughts, it will change who attracts to you, who's on your team and, and how they're showing up, you know? Yeah, you're always going to attract into your life and your team. Any anybody in life where you're at right now, that's that's those are the types of people that are going to show up into your business. Those are the type of people that are going to show up into your life. If you're single, you're going to have a single friends. The second you get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, now all your friends are couples. And the second you get married, now all your friends are you know you you're, wherever you're at in your life, that's what you're going to attract. So what I love about 
direct sales, what I love about this industry is if you're on a path of growth, as you're growing, you're going to probably outgrow some of your friends. I've outgrown pretty much all of my friends and I still love them. They still love me. They wish me well, but the reality is I'm, I'm just moving on. But as I kept growing, my income started growing. My, the quality of people coming into my business started being different. They weren't negative because I wasn't negative. They were, they were in shape because I was in shape. You know, so it's, it's, it's really weird how you attract who you are at that moment that you are um, at that time. I and agree with you. When yeah. you grow, when you start growing, you make that decision. It's like, it is crazy how fast the universe goes. Oh, wow. Look at Tony. Okay. Yeah. I want to meet this guy. And now you're at a coffee shop and, oh, this guy walks up to you and goes, oh man, gosh. And next thing you know, you've got a best friend that you feel like you've known forever. That's how fast this works. So it's beautiful when it happens. Yeah. I love that. You know, you attract who you're being really. And yeah. A lot of times, even when you reflect on what you want, say if you make a vision board or, you know, of what you want to achieve this year, some of it may seem unreal. And I think getting into the feeling space of having it is really powerful because then you can start to feel those feelings already. You know, it's not reserving like, I'll feel great when. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. The, we, yeah, this is a, the business that we're in is a heart business. I, I, I say we're in the serving business. And in fact, I was just having this conversation with my sister. My sister's brand new into this, into this industry. And, you know, she's had some stumbling blocks as we all have. Gosh, I've stumbled so many times. Lisa, I know you have too. And, and so she came to me because she, she knows what my wife and I've been capable of. And we started talking and it's like, you know, this, this, this process, it's so worth it. And most people, when they see somebody, when they, the reason why they have a problem with picking up the phone and calling somebody is because they're seeing that person as a, as a business transaction. Let's just be honest. I want to get Lisa because Lisa is this, she's this, she's this. And if I get her, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm set for life. And they put all this energy in that, and, and that's, where the, that's where the challenge is for people to pick up that phone and make those phone calls, is because now Lisa, who I've known my whole life, let's say, we went to school together, you know, we got on vacation together, whatever, I'm now seeing her as somebody different than who she really is, because I want her in my business, I want her to help see it, gosh, if she just sees it, man, if she just gets it, um, and I said to my sister, I said, this is a heart business. If you come from a place that you truly want to serve and you want to help every help others with your products, with your services, whatever that you have, I promise you it will change the complexion of your business. If I don't see Lisa as a business or a title or a rank, and I see her as somebody that um, that I care about, that I know that if she saw it and if she did great, she doesn't, no big deal that she could make an impact on a lot of people's lives and I would be able to help her maybe fulfill one of her dreams, which is to make impact on a lot of people's lives. And when you have that kind of dialogue going and that kind of synergy going, you, th this thing will, it will scale. Let's just put it that way. It will scale. The challenge is to get the business thing, hitting the rank, getting the paycheck, you know, walking the stage, whatever that is. <laughs> Kind of put, you got to put that in the back burner and you got to go, man, who can, I, who can I serve today? Who can I help today? I think that's such an important point because we can look at that one person we're trying to prospect and get super intimidated by it because of where we've placed them. We've seen them in our downline. They've exploded. They've shared it with 100 people because they're a go-getter in life on all the other things that they do. But they could have their own doubts. They could have their own learning curve. They could sign up two people and then do nothing the rest of the time. They could not join at all until you know you're crazy. Um, so it's, it's just where we place those people. And I think we've all been baited into believing that at first of like, oh, if I could just get that one, whatever, you know, into our business. But it's not about getting, I think when you're going at it from a getting standpoint, you've got your hand out to the world. You're trying to get something. And people are like, probably listening, like, yeah, I'm trying to get a paycheck. But um, it's, it's really once you do go at it from giving that you will get. Yeah, I, I believe it. I, um, it's, it's a really difficult thing 
Um, and we're all, we're all naturally givers. You know, it's women are nat women are the best networkers in the world. They're naturally willing to give of themselves, whether it be for their kids, for friends, whatever. So you do that in this space, it, you, you're, the sky's the limit, right? You do, you truly look at your business from a place of servitude of giving and assisting others on their path, whether it be a transformation, whether it be making more money, whether it be having experiences, whatever it is, you're going to win. It's just very difficult to stay in that space. It really is because the next promotion from the company's coming, you're like, oh my God, I want to get that. And now <laughs> all of a sudden that heart goes away because now the brain's going, dude, you deserve this, Tony. Come on, let's go, let's go charge the hill. Let's get everybody, you know? So yeah. It's fun. It, that's, that's what makes this so wonderful is you're, you're going to learn so much about yourself. And you're going to grow so much and you're going to handle so much. And um, you'll, be, you'll surprise yourself how much, uh, how much more capacity you have to, to really like, grow and do, do a lot, you know, a lot more than you think you can. That's awesome. Um, so tell me, you have trained on stages all over the world and really helped your company get to where it's at with being, you know, leadership and trainers. What do you find that people need to know the most to have exponential growth? Yeah. I, I, the biggest thing that people have to come to understand is this whole idea of building and motivating and training and, uh, this whole idea of residual income and what that is. A lot of people don't even really understand what that is or how to, you know, what that looks like. Um, this is a whole new, um, it's a whole new skill set. And it's something even now after 35 years of doing it that I still learn stuff. Like I'm heading up to LA tomorrow and I know I'm going to be with, you know, the founders of our company and I'm, I have an opportunity to learn something new, right? So it, it's a never ending process. So I, I guess my best guidance would be is to, you know, Number one, you have to have a reason to do this because what is going to keep you in the game? What is going to keep you in the game after a long day at work? Because most people do this part time. After a long day at work, coming home to the kids, you know, cooking dinner, whatever the case may be, or mowing the lawn if you're a guy, whatever, whatever it is, what's going to keep you engaged after a long bad day when you just want to sit back and chill? What is that going to be? Well, for me, you guys, you have to have a big, big why to do this. I'm, I'm sure everybody's heard this. You got to have a why. Like, what is your why? What is your why? Your why's got to make you cry. I'm just telling you right now. The reason why I've been um, in this space for so long, I've been with one company for the last 12 years where other people jumping down all over the place is because I have a big why. And I have a belief in myself and I have this thing called loyalty and I'm all these other um, values that are important to me. But my why is so big that if... 10,000 people lined up in a straight line and they all told me, no, that's crazy. That's a scam. That's not going to work. What's wrong with you? Go get a job. You know, if 10,000, a hundred thousand people came to me and said that I would be like, okay, whatever. You don't know why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I have a mom. I have, I, I have my kids, whatever that is for you. It cannot be money. You guys, you cannot do this business for money. If you do, you're going to fail miserably. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I mean, here's, here's the reality of it. If you join for money and you get in and you're excited and it takes you two weeks, two weeks to understand what the heck you're doing. And then maybe you talk to a few people and people aren't interested. And then three weeks goes by and you haven't made any money yet, which is why you joined your whole psychology shifts and you start to go, maybe this thing doesn't work. Maybe this is not for me. I don't know. And you start doubting yourself, right? So you guys, you have to have a bigger, bigger why than money. Now, if you find a big enough why um, and get behind that and don't let anybody tell you what's not possible, I promise you the money will come because the growth is going to come. The people are going to come. You're going to attract people that are going to come to your business that have a, probably a bigger why than you do. If you don't have a why, no one on your team is going to have one. I can assure you. So you be the example, you lead from the front, what is your wife for doing this? And you make that, you, you just make that part of your DNA um, and that will help you long, long term is doing, is having that. What's the way to emotionally connect to that why? Like some people may initially think it's money, 
because they want to replace their job. They're like, Hey, I want to stay at home or whatever that is. So, you know, they may be listening being like, well, yeah, I want money. Um, but the, the stronger why, like how to tap into that emotion. What mm -hmm. do you advise people? Yeah. So, so you have layers of an onion, right? So you have the, the top layer, right? Now as you get down to the layers, you peel back, then you start to cry as you start to really get to the, the core of that onion. Same thing with this. So when somebody goes, well, I need money because I, you know, I hate my job. Perfect. Let's talk about why you hate your job. Well, I hate my job because of this. I don't like what I'm doing. I'm not challenged. I'm not doing the perfect. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're peeling back the layer. What else about your job you like? Well, I don't like because I never get to spend time with my family. Oh, here we go. I like because I'm never home. Oh, I'm, I'm being a terrible mother because I'm unable to you know, be home with my kids or pick my kids up from school. And so all these other layers of that onion gets down to the real reason why they want to make the money, and that's because they want to have, they want to be a mom. They want to stay home. They want to be at every game. They want, so you have to get down to the core of that. Once you get down to the core of that, the real reason, the real reason, because I feel like I'm a terrible parent. I'm just be real. I feel I was doing as a hypnotist. I was on the road 250 days a year. I was missing my son's soccer games, baseball games, basketball, all of his stuff. And I got to a point where I just woke up and I go, what am I doing? And then I went out and started looking for a company. And the reason why I found that company wasn't because I wanted to make money. It was because I wanted to make sure that I could build something that would allow me to earn some income, but I would build something that would allow me to spend and look at my son's face every day, not be on the road. But every day, if I wanted to see my son's face, I could see that. And that feeling was my why, is to look at my son and go, yes, I'll take you to your game. Yes, I don't have to watch your game through Skype anymore. You know? So you have to find out what that is. Yes, we all want money. And yes, the money will come. Please don't join this business because you want to pay off your student loans. Please, please, please don't do this. There's got to be something else. There's a family member. There's a sick person. There's a deeper cause. Maybe you want to make earn income so you can start your own foundation to help battered women. I don't know what it is. You've got to find out what that is. And when you do, it's like you'll sit back and go, oh my gosh, that's it. That's why I'm going to work another two hours when I get home from work tonight. That's why I'm going to go to that event on Saturday, even though it is the day we're supposed to you know, rearrange my son's sock drawer, you know, <laughs> whatever, right? <laughs> we make excuses for everything, but you'll start doing things like that where you feel like you're sacrificing, but you're not because you know what the end in mind is. So you got to get down there and take some time. You got to peel back. Well, why do I want to leave my job? My boss is terrible. Okay. Well, that's another, that's a good reason. What else? Well, because I'm actually, I got called in to work on Sunday. Well, that's another reason. So what else? Well, because I never get to, Oh, let's talk about that. You never get to do what? Oh, your kids. Let's talk about that. And then now you're getting down to the core of what's really matters. And in that space, you're going to feel this new energy to read the books, to, to show up, to be present, to do all those things because you want to get better so you can leave your situation faster to be able to do the thing that you really, really want to do. I think there's two great points to that. And one is that's what makes you bulletproof. Yep. That's what makes you have a lineup of 10,000 people telling you no and you ask, 10,000 one times. Yep. You, you keep asking because it is that connected that you're like, my life doesn't have purpose if I don't do this thing, if I don't see my son's face every day. If you know, you get into a different space about it. So that's what brings out your shield and your sword. Yes. <laughs> to go do this every day. Um, and then the other part of that is that's what really brings connectivity to your team is getting on board with someone else's why is you develop more purpose in trying to help someone get to their why and therefore become a better leader because you're really connected to the fact of why they want to do what they do. You know, now, you know, if I was your mentor and I would be connected to you wanting to see your son every day. So I think it's, it's good once you know your why is to share it with, like you said, the people that you surround yourself by immediately. If it's not immediately your upline, it's the ones above them or the ones above them, just whoever your mentors can be. You want a, you want a multi-million dollar secret? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So love where you're at right now. This is like, I get goosebumps. So I know what I'm about to tell you is good when I get goosebumps. Um, 
one of the things that my wife and I start incorporating, because culture is really big for us, but we have our team and we, we made our decision when we started 12 years ago that we were going to create a culture that people just want to be part of, right? A lot of people will come into this industry, they won't make the money that everybody else is, but because of the culture being so strong, they love it. One of the things that we always do, so if I was, Lisa, if you and I were to work together, we'd sit down and I would spend some time with you to bring that why to the surface and spend some time there. And I've got this book that looks like something you would see like a, in the movie, um, uh, oh geez, Indiana Jones, the Temple of Doom or something. It's like this book that's gold and it's got gold plate and like a little lock on it. And this book is my book of wives. And so I would sit down with you and you would say what your why is. I'd actually have you write your why into my book, into my book. So now you're writing it, you're signing it, and you're saying, I'm doing this because I want to blank, 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 blank. And now I've got that book. And anytime, Lisa, you decide to check out for a week or two weeks or a month, let's say, I don't hear from you, I could call you and say, Lisa, how's things going? You go, oh my gosh, I've been so busy. And you know what? I was just sitting here and I'm sitting with my book and I'm just feeling really empowered. And I opened up my book of whys and I saw your thing that you wanted to accomplish and I want to get you back engaged again. And then you're going to get back engaged again. And what I love about for me as a leader, if I'm ever having a bad moment, if I'm reading this whole book of people's whys and all the, the good that I have to do, like I got, oh my God, I got 150 people in this book. I can, I got stuff. I feel like Santa Claus. I got to go, you know deliver some gifts and call these people and say, come on, Cindy, come on, Mark, you said you were going to, and it keeps me engaged in my business. Like I'm more engaged now after 35 years in this space than I've ever been at any other time because I get, I get, I get it. And I know that I have the ability to help people along their path, but I got to do a little bit of stuff and I got to do a little fact finding and connecting. Big thing is you got to connect with people. And this book of why is a great way to do that. I think that's great because now it gives you personal responsibility over helping that person succeed. And it's no longer about you. It's yep. no longer that you woke up today and you're like, oh, I'm not feeling it today. You know, it's, yep. it's really like, no, I'm, I have this book of people that are codependent on like me being a mentor to them. Let's, let's do this, you know, yeah. and that, that does create a culture because you know, maybe even if you had accountability partners or something like that, um, you know, and people as they're developing leadership, they can, you know, pull people along in that same way. You're leading in the way that you would like, you know, someone to lead you. Yeah. 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 And it's crazy when you have people on your team that their why is to help me, which is really weird, like help me get to where I want in my life, it's, which is really weird. Like their why will be this, but they all say, we want to help you because all the help that you've done to us, like our goal is to help you get to whatever level that you want to get to. And that's when it's a real beautiful thing. When you've got all these people that are just helping each other, mm -hmm. you know, get a little further down the track, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yeah. And, you know, I think as you mentioned before, getting into some of those, the why of the why of the why of the why it's like levels, right? So yeah. it is like that onion you're no longer really selling. It, it really takes the sales out of it because all you have is a solution. You know, they could have joined anybody's team a long time ago. They've probably been presented it even softly six times over the last 12 years, but they bought you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing something different than everybody else is doing, you're going to win. I, you know, I don't know how many emails I get, I get in my inbox going, Hey Tony, how you doing? you keep your business options open. It's like, who, who attracts people like that anymore? Like that is so like old school. That's so yesterday. You know, it's like the, the where's the connection? Where's yeah. the interest in the person? And I, the person that does that the most, the person that reaches out the most with the right intention, you know, at least this, what I have for you may not fit, but you know, I'm really excited about it. You're the first person I thought about. I wanted to share it with you, you know, and then, you know, whatever system you use to drip on them, that's what you send them. And if they're open to it, you're not selling anyway, you're sorting. You're just sorting, you're just sorting. And if, if they're interested, you give them something else to chew on. If they're interested at that, you give them something else. And eventually they're gonna go, you know what? This makes sense, I should do it. And then they have the belief in you because you didn't come at them guns a blazing, just like, all right, I'm gonna close you. You just like, I'm so chill. It's like, I don't even know what I'm, I don't even know what business I'm in. I'm just so chill about my business. It's like, 
Yeah, how things going, Tony? Oh my gosh, it's great. Life is great, but man, this thing I started just going nuts. Well, what's the thing that's going nuts that you started? Well, let me send you a mess. I'll send you a text message. Look at it if you're interested. You know, we'll we'll connect. I mean, that's that's the extent of my pitch. I'm not attached to, and I have no expectation. Which uh, this is probably something we can probably talk about real quick. Is I don't expect anything. If I send somebody a text or however you expose your business to people. However you do that, whether it's face-to-face, -face, through a video, through a conference, however you do that, I have zero, zero expectation that Lisa Rooney is going to be interested. I have mm -hmm. zero. And that's really hard for people because Lisa and I, if, if I, again, if I've known you for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, like I want you to see it. I want you to understand it. I want you to get into it. It's hard for me to go, Lisa, I don't even care if you like it or not. This is just something I'm doing. Take a look at it. If you're interested, you know, we'll go down the path. I expect zero until Lisa says, hey, this looks interesting. Tell me more. Or mm -hmm. what's this all about? Well, great. Let me send you something else. Lisa sees something next. Hey, this is really intriguing. Tell me more. How do I, you know, I got some questions. Great. Let me get you on the phone with somebody that can help you. And that's pretty much what I've been doing for 12 years is I'm a, I'm a, I'm a traffic cop. I'm like, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, you're interested? Go over here, go over here. Oh, great. Oh, no, you're not interested. Go over there. That's what I've been doing for 12 years and without any expectation. Now, when you're in and you've made that decision, then you and I are besties. Now everything changes, right? Now I'm going to step in as a leader or as your mentor or your guide, and I'm going to assist you on your path and do all this stuff, which is the whys and the, get you started right and all that stuff. You know, and yeah, I think um, you touched on some good points there. I like the saying that you don't have a prospect, you have a suspect. Yep. <laughs> so it's, you know, people aren't responding to spam anymore. You know, spam type of emails and, and contacts and stuff like that. Like they want people to know them enough of like asking them like, hey, I thought of you for something. Did you want to take a look or you know, maybe even like, I'm trying this product. Can you let me know what you think of it? Just mm -hmm. different, different ways of subtlety. But I think the most important point you make is that you had zero attachment to the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's hard because we're, you know, we're humans. It's like, you know, it, it, the hardest thing is to watch somebody like, I'll get, here's a great story. My mom, when I first got involved with the company that I'm with right now, 12 years ago, she was the first person I called. I said, mom, I got this company, you know me, we're gonna crush it, blah, 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 let's do this. She's like, eh, it's just not my thing. That's cool, you do that. I'm just, no one, be, no one I know would be interested in doing that, so eh, okay, fine. Six and a half years later, I've been send, I sent her products every month. Um, every time a new product came out, sent her a new product, yada, yada, and six and a half years later, I'm on stage, my wife and I are getting a half a million dollar check, right? I'm at the Miami Heat Arena, I got a big $500,000 check that's like, Five feet long and I'm holding it up I'm giving this my my speech I thought about when I was 11 years old sitting on that teeter-totter and um, somebody somebody recorded it on YouTube and put it out on Facebook right I didn't even know anything about it I come home on Tuesday <laughs> and my mom calls me she's like how's it going son I go great mom what's going on she goes well I saw the video and I'm like what are you talking about she goes well the video of you down with getting your half a million dollar check and I go oh you saw a video and he's like yeah and she goes I think I'm ready now. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? It's been six and a half years and you're just, so, you know, it's just like, I, if, if some people put so much weight on getting their mom, their friend or whatever, and if it doesn't happen, all of a sudden they get deflated and then the next person they get deflated and eventually they're just gone. They're just gone. So that's why I decided a long time ago, I don't expect anything. I've got, I got something. I'm really excited about it. Lisa, I thought about you. I just wanted to share it with you. Take a look at this. And uh, as a friend, let me know, let me know what you like best. Well, I think because family is who we expect to support us. Mm -hmm. So it's probably, really? stronger, we do? <laughs> it's probably a stronger no sometimes to people like they should be the ones to, they should be, yeah. to join me. They should be the ones that are, you know, being my best cheerleader or, whatever like there's so much more expectation i think and then also the flip side of that is when they do say no the dialogue changes to like not even my family and friends want this you know yep. like what am i gonna do now i'm not gonna talk to strangers they're gonna be the ones that say no because my own family you know 
Now yeah. I don't get invited to any events because they think I'm going to pitch them. But it's just the funny, the internal dialogue that can result from a few people saying no, but it's just not their time. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, and it wasn't. And, and just, you know, it's like, not everybody likes broccoli for goodness sakes. Like, you know, so it's like, <laughs> why, why do we get so hung up on, you know, things? It's, 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 it's a process. You know, one of my, one of my mentors, Jim Rohn, you know, he, he jokingly says, you know, that he's uh, seven people out of 10 will tell him no in his business. And so he, he had no expectation. He knew his numbers. He knew that three would say yes out of the 10. Right. So he would go to somebody like you and go, Hey, Lisa, I started a new company and seven people are going to tell me, no, I want you to be one of my seven. I mean, that's, that's how he didn't even care. It's like, I want you to be one of the seven that says you're not interested because I know three people will tell me yes. And it's, that's the place we need to come from is we just got to come, you know, Hey, I'm involved in something. I love it. I thought about you. Take a look at it. You're interested. You know, so let's connect about it. But you've got to be, you got to do that. You can't do that to three people. You got to do 300. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like open up your cell phone and just blast people like in a nice way. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. How are you doing? I thought about you. Check this out. And just massive action. Yeah. Three people, three people led me to 35,000 people in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I can tell you, you don't mean much. You need three good people, two good people to start the fire, you know? I love it. I love the ripple effect. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I think that everyone's gotten a lot of value from the mindset shifts alone. Um, how would people stay in touch with you if they wanted to get a hold of you? Hey, they got this really cool thing. I just discovered it called Facebook. Have you heard of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, I know that guy. What, did, what was he thinking? Like, who would want that? No, um, you guys, obviously on Facebook. Um, I'm, you can find me on Facebook if you just go Tony Lucero. Um, I, I just set up a brand new business page. So there's there, but I'd like, can I give people a gift, Lisa? Can yes, you certainly can. And I'll link to it in the show notes. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, um, one of the things I've been using, I don't want to give the gift away, but it's a good one. It's <laughs> something to help, help deal with like stress and help to deal with energy and help to deal with these different types of things. So I'm not gonna give it away, but if you go to Tony Lucero.com forward slash the word gift. So like a present forward slash gift. Um, just put your name in there and I'll send you something little uh, that you'll enjoy. But you promise me if you do it, that you practice this because this is a multi, multi million dollar thing you're going to learn how to do. So I want to make sure that if you do take the gift that you put it into practice. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. You're so generous and I loved spending this time with you. I went so, so quick. Let's do it again. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, and congratulations on all your success and to all your listeners. You guys, everything you want is just right there, but you got to do what I call the good. It's not work. Just do the good, and uh, you'll get there. Thank you so much for joining in on another episode of the Millionaire Network Marketer. If you haven't already, be sure to download the Attract Prospects to You free guide that I have for you. I'll leave a link below if you're on YouTube. And if not, if you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher Radio, then go ahead and go to the website, themillionairenetworkmarketer.com, and you can download it right there. And you can also subscribe to the email version, I can email you every marketing Monday and you can have it sent to your inbox. All right. I'll see you next time.